Buenos días. El Tecnológico de Costa Rica celebra la Semana de la Calidad, construyendo cultura de excelencia TEC, la cual ha sido organizada por la Oficina de Planificación y la Unidad Especializada de Control Interno. Dentro de las actividades del día de hoy tenemos la charla del profesor Eben John Belsing de la Universidad de Ciencias Aplicadas de Windesheim, Países Bajos. La charla se, se titula A Systems Perspective on Quality. Ahora continuaré la charla en, in en inglés, pues el profesor la realizará en inglés. Today we have the presentation titled A Systems Perspective on Quality. Ever Jan Belsing is a professor of urban, urban innovation and business at Bindesheim University of Applied, Applied Sciences in the city of Almere, Netherlands. He has been researching innovation, sustainability in construction and manufacturing industry, circular business models, value change cooperation, and innovation policy since 2008. At Bindesheim University of Applied Sciences, Mr. Belsing leads the research group Urban Innovation. This research group aims to contribute to inclusive and sustainable urban development. Projects focus on innovation that enables the economic, social, and ecological development of cities and neighborhoods. Central research questions are how innovations are being developed in an urban context and what value is being added for inhabitants, governors, entrepreneurs, and societal organizations. For these questions, uh, a system perspective is imperative. Please welcome Everjam Belsing. Thank you for the for the introduction, um, Raoul. Um, yeah, I was I was asked to, to share my perspective uh, from a system or my view from a systems perspective on quality. Um, I'm very happy to do that, and um, yeah, I wish you all a pleasant day and good morning, although it's turning evening uh, where I am. I will uh, I will start and, and share my screen because I uh, I prepared a presentations and I also welcome you after pr the presentations to presentation to ask questions. So what I what I try to do um, I see this week is is on quality and I I think I assume my my take uh, from a systems pers perspective on quality is a little bit different and. I also see that as, as an added, added value, I hope, uh, to the week. Um, so what does that entail, a systems perspective on quality? First, I start to, uh, I would like to, uh, to introduce myself a little bit. Um, I was educated in, in science and innovation management. Um, after that, I did a PhD in innovation policy. Uh, for some time, uh, I worked as a consultant on sustainable innovation for manufacturing companies. Uh, as an advisor for the, for the foundation on industrial policy. I was a lecturer in industrial engineering. Uh, uh, I taught classes on, on systems innovation and systems engineering, uh, a research, researcher on topics like circular economy as, and as introduced by Raoul. Currently, I am a professor on uh, urban innovation in the city of Amir. Um, of course, I would all like to welcome you there, but the distance is a bit far away and I'm, I'm happy to be able to contribute in this manner. Um, a systems per perspective, in my view, is imperative to obtain quality. So if we don't take that systems perspective, my, um, yeah, my statement would be that quality and, and certainly quality on, on the longer term is, um, is something we will not obtain. So um, we need the systems perspective to actually uh, make sure that we can have qualitative products, services, or any other thing that we will develop as, as engineers or, or as business professionals. What I would like to say, to share to you with you is, uh, first of all, a little bit uh, definition. As a researcher, of course, we'd like to de define everything, and obviously this is also important. So what is quality? What is a system? And then share a little bit uh, the engineer's take on a system. Um, 
talk to you about systems thinking and, and central in my presentations are two quite different examples, one on community schools and one on saving plastics. And um, I'd like to finish with concluding remarks. And of course, thank you for um, your attention. But first, let's start what, what is quality. Um, if we look this up on any website, on, on Wikipedia or the dictionary or uh, go to the library, quality is about the non inferiority or superiority of something, uh, goods or services. And that obviously is a quite broad definition and quality we can of course also apply on many different aspects on processes on products and services as shared. Um, it is also defined as being suitable for the, for the intended purposes, fitness for purpose, while satisfying customer expectations. And, and that's, that's something of course uh, key to the to the business professionals, but also to other professionals to think about what are actually the customer needs. So when is something satisfying? When when does the quality also satisfy what the users actually intended or need or would like to have? To make this a little bit more concrete, well, let's try. Quality is about functioning products, functioning services and products and services that deliver the desired outcomes and therefore meet the needs of people and also meet the needs of the planet. So there comes different perspectives and in that way enabling value and profit. So when, we, when I talk about quality, it's not only about um, a good product that generates profit. It's also about meeting the need of the planet, actually of the system the product is, is functioning in. And only if we make sure that it meets this broader need, in my view, um, quality can generate uh, value and profit also in the longer term. Then what do we understand as a system? Also, again, a quite broad general definition. And uh, a system is an assemblage or combination of things or part, parts forming a complex or unitary whole. Um, based on just um, a, a random dictionary. So a very broad definition. So can we make that a little bit more concrete? My first step would be to model it. So if we have a system and depict that as a cloud, cloud um, a system, we always define a, a system by, by its boundary. So a, a system is a, is a specific um, thing in 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 um, um, in our environment. So every system that we de define, we also think about the boundary, and then the system con consists of different elements. Within this system boundary and the system, we we see different connections or interfaces. So the ele elements are connected. Maybe some are not connected to others, but the elements are connected with each other. These connections we call interfaces. If we when we define a boundary, there's also an environment. So every system has an environment and um, we cannot look, or if we look at the environment, we also see elements or parts in that environment. And these parts on their turn can connect to the elements or um, the elements within the system. And if we talk about those interfaces, we talk about input or output relations to the system. I think it's clear that this is a really abstract, broad and also abstract definition of what a system is. To make it a little bit more concrete, um, if we define it that way, a system can be almost, or maybe it can actually be everything. It can be a house in, in the forest. It can be um, an extruder, so machines in, uh, in um, production environments. It can be a big wheel at, at a ferry. Um, it can be a modern car or a car that we depict in the future. Um, it can be art or land art or an ecosystem outside. Um, it can be a sub, uh, suburban uh, environment, uh, new city developments. All those bigger and smaller things we can define as a system. And because of that, it's also very important to make sure that we define the system boundaries. If, if we do not have um, a good and strict definition or idea about what the boundaries are, it's very difficult to analyze and to look at the system. 
Then when we go and talk to engineers, according to engineers, a system is a combination of inter interacting elements organized to achieve one or more stated purposes. That's very, uh, engineers tend to talk about systems more, more in, in functional terms. Um, it's also defined as a collection of different elements that together produce um, not obtainable by the, um, produce results not obtainable by the elements alone. And what's inter interesting about this, this definition is also states that it, inc it includes humans, hardware, software, facilities, policies, documents, data, et, et cetera. So it can be um, a tangible thing, product, uh, but it, at the same time, if we talk about the system, we can also use a broader definition and also include other aspects, softer aspects in, uh, in that definition. And engineers try to operationalize that um, in a more or less linear way when, uh, and then they look at, um, well, they've taken into account design and needs also from a customer or user perspective, interfaces, including test equipment, transport operators and users, reuse and adaptability, maintenance, um, actually all the steps in a life cycle of a typical product. And looking more in detail to that, um, engineers uh, well go actually in a, in a step by step way from an, an, an analysis of the requirements. So what are, are actually what is needed to uh, produce the product, and then work out the design in every ever more in ever more detail. So from a high level design, go to de detailed designs from the different different subsystems. And even in, into more details um, based on that sub, the subsystems, um, and then use terms as product specification, parts, materials, processes, um, and build up the products from that perspective. So uh, the elements um, are made into subsystems, and the subsystems are made into uh, the whole product. And every part is tested to make sure that the system, so the product, is actually working. And it does actually comply to the needs of uh, to the requirements that are analyzed in the first phase. And this product can be um, it is of course also the, the result and is further tested to make sure that it is that it is actually functioning. This is what we call a systems engineering uh, perspective, which is different um, from system systems thinking systems thinking is more it is not only about the system and the design the system we talk about so the product or service or the combination of a product and service um, and the subsystem so for example a bike um, is made out of uh, um, a chain and a saddle and the different elements the different subsystems um, systems thinking is also very much about the super system so what is the environment what are the bigger systems that are that that surrounds the systems that we we want to design and um, this perspective is, is very important if we actually want to understand how this product we are uh, we are designing we are developing will also function in in the real world um, and if we forget to think about the super system the the larger environment then um, what will happen in practice is that we design and make very, very functioning products from um, a requirements and analysis perspective, but we tend to forget that they actually also that they also work in real life and uh, how to actually and also do not make sure to uh, that they are adaptable to changes in the environment, for example. So if we work that out for a modern car, um, quite futuristic in the in the picture on the on the screen. Um, a modern car, um, the super system could be the, uh, if you talk about traffic control, the satellite navigation. So a modern car is connected um, through its navigation system. And the subsystem is uh, the mechanical, and that is that, it, that the engine is mechanical and ICT dependent. Um, more and more also electrical, um, but 80, 90%, um, sometimes even more, of course, still have mechanical uh, engines. Looking at the past, which is often useful to understand developments uh, from an historical perspective, because of course we're not made uh, we're made without ECT, 
Um, and in the future, we talk about driverless car cars. So this will take this. This will change the system we are going to develop in the, in the future. Um, from a traffic control perspective, the past situation was that uh, it it is driver dependent only, and in and um, mechanical uh, and the engine is made out of uh, a mechanical petrol system. Thinking about the, the future, we also could imagine um, a traffic control controlled by a traffic control system. This in combination with uh, with systems of uh, of driverless cars, um, meaning that subsystems um, uh, also will be electrically and, and fully connected. Um, so this this development of ICT well is all, uh, already going quite fast. And um, in the future, we will not. We do not expect that uh, this will slow down. Um, and what I wanted to show with this um, diagram is that taking into account bo both the subsystem subsystem perspective and the super system perspective helps us to understand um, future developments from the present situations. And when doing that, it's also always useful to also take into account a little bit what where we came from. So uh, what was the past situation? And this is, a, to, in my opinion, a nice simple uh, model that can be applied to, uh, to, to all kinds of products. So to sum up this first, this introduction to systems thinking, why do we use systems thinking? Um, I see four main reasons is that with uh, systems thinking, we do not only think about the parts, we also think about the whole and even the, the whole uh, in the environment. So we can also zoom out uh, and not only think about the system we are designing, but also about the, the super system and the, the environment. Um, uh, we do not per se look at developments from a linear perspective, but also from a nonlinear perspective. So the example from systems engineering is still quite linear uh, if we add a more systems perspective, systems thinking to that, we also think about what do we do with products at the end of their lives? Um, and what other loops do we have to take into account? What can change in the, um, in the environment where we design products for? Um, it's systems thinking is also about the difference between a disconnected kind of thinking and a connected kind of thinking. So if we um, develop elements and parts or products in a disconnected way, then we do not know what will happen if they are going to work together. And with uh, systems thinking, we do take to that into account. This is more complex or more complicated, but it, it's also more closer to, um, to the real life situations. And um, the difference between a more traditional way of thinking and a systems uh, thinking way is that is also uh, a difference between a reductionist and an emergence kind of thinking. So if we uh, take a reduction perspective, uh, then um, we can deduce what happens from uh, from the starting point. And um, in a systems perspective, we try to understand what emergent properties uh, a system has. So things that can happen are going to happen that we cannot um, uh, that we cannot predict for example, that are different to predict or that are um, uh, also difficult to grasp and, uh, and trying to understand those kinds of uh, situations, those kinds of developments. What does that look like? So if we actually analyze um, real world situations, then um, in that way, I, I, I took twi two quite different examples. Uh, uh, one of saving one of the company called Safe Plastics, um, well, uh, aimed to save actually plastic waste and make use of that, and an example of community schools, the, uh, a development in many many neighborhoods. Um, and with these examples, I would like to show some of the benefits of a of a systems uh, perspective on on and also what that means for uh, for the quality of these. Um, services and the products made by these kinds of uh, uh, companies or, uh, well, uh, schools, of course. Let's first look at, uh, at, at the company called Safe Plastics. Um, Safe Plastics is a company of about, uh, that already exists for 40 
years for several decades. And um, in the later years, actually, also is aiming to make sure that the plastic waste is, waste is not being incinerated, but it's, putting, but it's being put into use. So what they try to do is to gather the lower value plastic waste and make high quality products out of that. Um, on a shorter term to make nice products and to make a profit, but uh, on a longer term also from a vision that uh, it is a waste to incinerate plastic since it's um, a valuable material, since it's, it is recyclable and uh, we are able to make new products out of that. So it's a waste um, in a way to, um, to incinerate that and to not make use of, uh, of that material. Um, so their main focus in their operational process, this is maybe a little bit a complicated picture, but it depict, depicts the uh, operational process of the company is that they uh, gather recycled materials. They make sure to uh, pick out the lower value plastics since the higher value plastic can be used in other products. Um, uh, they agglomerate that in a, in a useful mix and uh, through an extrusion process make uh, products of the, out of that. And what is very important in their process is, of course, the quality control to make sure that from the uh, recycled materials, which ha does not have a, a, a fixed quality, that the products that come out of that um, are, do, uh, do meet their quality standards. And only after that step, which is normal for many companies, of course, but um, in this way, since the input quality is uncertain, the quality control um, of the production process is even more important. And if it doesn't meet the needs, they also they do make sure that uh, that they can reuse the product within their operation, operational process. Um, so only after the quality control, they uh, send products to sale, distribution, and use. Um, and also are developing a product take back scheme and uh, make sure that the products they make that it that it's clear what kind kind of material, what kind, what mix of plastics the products are made of, and uh, in order to um, enable future recycling. Um, another aspect is uh, making good use of waste plastic. So before the, the, the plastic mix that this company uses actually ends up in the, uh, in the production process, um, there is a whole system of um, uh, production of other plastic products in package or in, uh, in use products, uh, retail use and waste collection. Um, and understanding this waste collection is key, uh, is key for this company. Also understanding uh, what the different quality of the waste is. Uh, is, it, is there still a higher or a lower value? In the different um, in the different fractions of the waste stream. So what this company also does, it uh, has a very close cooperation with a uh, with a waste collecting company and also with the sorting system uh, applied by the waste collecting company in order to be able to understand the different waste streams and to be able to understand what quality of plastic they can they can expect from uh, from this. Um, from these waste streams and from these uh, collecting companies. And this is what the, what, what the value stream looks like. So there are many kinds of plastics, uh, PET, PE, PP, that have a relatively higher value and actually are already being put into use free of recycling processes. And the company uh, focuses on a, on a kind of rest, um, mixed plastics fraction that consists of, of many different kinds of, of plastics and they to try to understand the quality of that and what they try to um, they try to make sure that it is not being generated as I said uh, but they try to take that up as recycled materials uh, put them um, or uh, use them in their green plastic factory and make uh, items for wholesale, mainly business to business for that. So examples of um, products they made are, are benches for outside, um, lamp posts, also um, jetties for, for, for in, the, in water, also construction materials for houses. So um, the, the owner of the company is actually living in, uh, in a house made, of his, uh, made out of his own factory. So 
some uh, some concluding remarks when we take the systems perspective on this company. What does that does that learn us about quality? Uh, first of all, which is of course applied by many companies already, is that waste can be uh, can be seen as a resource for quality products. So the company uh, can make sure that they use actually even low quality waste and make high quality products also with a a guarantee uh, products that they can take back that ha have a longer life for 30 or 40 years. They make, what, as I said, construction materials used also in houses and in bridges from the products they make. Um, an important aspect is also keeping material in use for future developments. Uh, so part of their mission is also making sure that plastics is not being incinerated, but is kept uh, into use because in the future, we might develop technologies th that we can actually can make even better use of these kinds of plastic fractions. The, we do not throw them away or burn them because if we burn those kinds of polymers, those kinds of plastics, then they're lost. They're lost into the air. Um, obviously, circularity is at the key of their business processes. So making sure that we uh, and also enabling long-term quality of resources, not only focusing on the input and output, but also looking at um, the collection system even before they receive the materials and collaborating with those partners and also collaborating with their clients to um, make sure that uh, well to enable a product take-back system, for example. And. In a way, a, a summary of this example is that uh, many actors and stakeholders are uh, are involved in their uh, company directly or indirectly, and they benefit from cooperating with these different stakeholders at the supply uh, side, as a, at the customer side, but also from government, uh, research institutes, etc., cetera, um, because of their different perspectives and also their different role and the different connections they have to the uh, within the supply chain and also within the um, well uh, broader environment of where they work in, uh, because in um, in waste and production uh, also public organizations have a have, have, a, have an important role, um, and they understand this this well complex situation of their um, of their business. The second example. Uh, community schools, as I said, quite a different example, but um, at the same time, also a, a very stressing issue. Um, there is, uh, well, every co country, of course, ha has a lot of elementary schools, and this is all the, also the case in the Netherlands. And in the Netherlands, uh, a, 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 div a current development is to make sure that uh, schools that and, and other organizations that had separate locations actually are going to combine their locations into one building and this means lower operating costs and also make sure that um, the, the the children or other users of the building can also make use of other functions when it comes to uh, to healthcare for example but also community building um, thing, sporting activities things uh, children also do outside but also connecting to uh, to parents or other facilities within the neighborhoods. Um, and that's why the term community schools is, is used to, to look at the school from a community, from a neighborhood perspective. When looking at the city of Amira, we, we identified 82 elementary schools. Um, and until 2035, until 2035, so for the next 10, more than 10 years, um, many of those schools schools will be renovated or newly built. And uh, because of this need uh, for renovation and, and new build, also uh, it's also because of the high operational costs, be, uh, because of the energy prices, but also because they already exist for uh, 40 or 50 years and um, do, not, um, do not function as they, as they should uh, based on, on, on current norms. Um, and this development, uh, well, because of this development, we can use at, we can look at the community schools uh, from different perspectives. Um, we look at them from adaptive use scenarios. So how can we make sure that the buildings, the school buildings are not only being used 
during school hours, but all, also after that, later in the afternoon or in the evening. And what does that mean also for, uh, for the design of the buildings and uh, the modularity or the, the, the changes that are required? Um, when it comes to the environment and the role within the neighborhood, we also look from a nature inclusive perspective. Um, so how do we actually make sure that the development of the um, of the area of the living uh, uh, the living space is not only made out of concrete and stones, but also has more green spaces and uh, shade spaces and things like that. Um, and what is needed to fa facilitate neighborhood needs. And um, probably this is not readable. And if you can read it, it is uh, in Dutch. But what I want to make sure with the dots is, is that if we um, take into account adaptive use scenarios, um, there are different aspects that are important. Um, so for example, what materials are actually, um, can we make use also from a circular perspective? Can we reuse certain materials? Can we use bio-based materials? And what kind of materials do we want to use if we want to make sure that we can reuse them on a longer term? And uh, so that is the adaptivity also at the end of life, but there's also an adaptivity in making sure that um, uh, changes in the use of the building. So the uh, expectation is that it will remain uh, a school, but other uses, for example, in, in healthcare, in, um, um, in welfare, uh, welfare services, uh, those are requirements that could change for the buildings. And how can you make sure that you can, that those buildings are adaptable? Also, uh, the amount of children in a neighborhood might grow and might, uh, might be more and might be less for the next 20, 30 or 40 years. Um, and what does that mean for modularity, for design and uh, for the uh, materials that are being chosen? The other perspective uh, is more about uh, the green spaces and the biodiversity. Um, what kind of knowledge do we have to develop? Um, how much waste is being gen generated? How do we respect the green spaces in nature? How do we respect the biodiversity in order to not have too much cost to maintain the greener area? Uh, this leads to other aspects and other connections within the, uh, well, the, the, the commun community school development. And then a third perspective is looking at the neighborhood needs. So the people uh, living in the neighborhood, not only the children and the parents, but also other uh, people living there or working there, what is their take on the development of, of, uh, of a community school? And how can they, for example, participate? And how would they like to, uh, what, what, what functional needs do they, they have when it comes to the design of the school? And when putting all these aspects, all these dots, all these connections together, um, what is apparent is in this example is that there are a lot of different needs and a lot of different wishes from all these kinds of stakeholders. And the systems perspective um, is difficult in a way that we have to take into account a lot of things. At the same time, it is helpful to try to understand what needs and what perspectives could be important in developing a school, uh, a community school. Of course, at the end of, um, of a process like this, this, there are choices to be made and not everything can be taken into account. But it, at the same time, it's, we find it is a, a very useful process to make sure that um, schools are not being designed and developed based on past needs, but are actually being developed based on future needs. And we also see examples where that is not being done, that uh, very nice and beautiful buildings do not actually, are not um, meeting the needs of their users and also of the broader needs of the uh, neighborhood. And actually, well, they are not going to be demolished, but there is an, uh, there are questions to renovate or remodel uh, quite new buildings because um, these kinds of processes um, have not been done. So some con concluding remarks on quality for community schools. Um, we look at different angles and looking at it from these different angles gives a better understanding, a better picture of the connections uh, within the neighborhood and also the connections from the neighborhood with the schools. Um, it is not only about a social or a 
um, knowledge development. It's, it's also an economic development. So how can we make sure that it's affordable to develop these kinds of uh, schools, but it's also a broader social development within the neighborhood and eco ecological development in um, trying to develop uh, greener neighborhoods or greener cities that are uh, more pleasant to live in. Um, not a linear design based on current needs, but a modular design also making sure that we uh, can meet the needs of, uh, of future requirements. And as is very clear, there are many actors and many stakeholders with many connections. This helps to understand uh, the, whole, the whole system in a better way. Um, and as I said, it's also um, a, a difficult and a complex situation, a situation that needs explanation also with the neighborhoods and explanations about the choices that are being made um, from the different perspectives. Well, what I tried to do with um, my introduction in a more abstract manner and the concrete examples is to convince you in a way or to make uh, clear why we should use a systems think, uh, why we should use systems thinking. Systems thinking is about showing the big picture, um, about understanding connections and closed loops, uh, about understanding synergy uh, of the system. So the the, the bigger aim uh, or, the, or the bigger benefits of, uh, of working together. Um, it's about looking from multiple perspectives. Systems thinking is um, also about tolerating ambiguity and uncertainty. Uh, we do not know uh, or sometimes do not know at all what will happen in the future and tolerating it, making sure that we can adapt um, ambiguity and uncertainty is uh, an important part of systems thinking. Uh, propagating possible changes, uh, life cycle anal analysis also at, as a very important aspect of, uh, of, of systems thinking. And systems thinking enables us to find new solutions and enables innovation and creativity. And as my statement is, um, an holistic approach on improving quality. That is also what systems thinking is. And Hereby, I'd like to thank you for your attention and welcome you to ask questions um, and looking maybe at Raul to see whether um, he's going to look at the questions or whether I should see in the chat box or in the questions and ask what, what questions have been raised. Thank you, Professor, for your presentation. Yes, we're going to uh, give a little bit of space for the questions. And uh, let me let me read some of those that we have received on the Q&A. And the first one is from Rodrigo Calvo. Rodrigo Calvo says, hi, thanks for the presentation. First, how you address risks within a system? Thank you for, for your question. That's an, uh, uh, that's an important question. Um, the... Um, well, the way I did not have, um, I did not focus on, on, on risk management within the system. I would suggest uh, a risk management approach. So to add a risk management approach on, on the analysis um, and to take into account um, in that approach also the different stages. So not only looking at uh, what's happening now, but also um, the uncertainties that, that, uh, that can happen in the future. But I think risk management approaches uh, are, are suitable to do that. Okay. Another question from Rodrigo Calvo is, the way you address or handle risk depends on the systems you use, according to the classification you show us in your presentation. Um, this is... Can, can, can you repeat the question? Can, can you give us some more information about the way you address or handle risk, which depends on the system you use? Um, what, what I, I think what, what an, an important um, benefit of, of the system thinking is, is also to identify um, the, not only the, the system itself, so the, the, the product, for example, you focus on in the risk management, um, but also look at what is the bigger environment. So what are the, 
uh, what are what are the possible connections that uh, from a more deterministic uh, point of view you could forget uh, and do take into account into into risk management so uh, a systems perspective on risk management um, um, yeah can make sure that you rethink your risk management and uh, think about did we actually take into account um, all possibilities that we would so so we think your uh, risk management approach that is what i would say and also uh, understand on on what level uh, is our system system or, or, or what level of the system is our risk management applied and do we um, have to take uh, um, a higher or a lower level in into account in our analysis um, and I think it's also useful to rethink, um, so to actually discuss about the the choices made in the risk management, not to not only not per se with the goal to redo the work, but to make sure that um, in this, that process of risk management, nothing nothing uh, fell out. Okay. That's what I would say. Thank you. Let's but continue it, with yeah yeah, yeah okay. go ahead yeah okay. please yeah. Let's continue with some other questions. Ronald Leandro, a professor from tech, is asking, based on an holistic approach of systems, how the culture affect that system, such as an enterprise or a university, meaning organizational culture? Mm. Um, yeah, it, it, it does definitely affect the, the system. So. Um, the um so for example if we take and uh, talk about the community schools the uh the the cultural environment of the of the schools is is a very important factor in the choices that are being made so um we of course compare the different situations of those schools and the development but uh, every school has a, has its own staff and its own culture so make and the connection uh, for them with other professional organizations is different in, in each situation. So that means that the 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 system of a school is is never the same. Every school is different, and so the organizational culture is important. And that, and that of course is true for for every uh, system or every product or service. That it's always part of an organizational culture, whether it's a business or a, or a university. Um, may, yeah, meaning that that um, every uh, every context is is different. So we and I think that's also, in my opinion, also very interesting about business studies. Um, not one situation is exactly the same, and uh, system perspectives. Yeah, that that's one of the core um, principles of, of of using a system perspective that you take that into account. And okay. Thanks for the question. I think so, he does. Um, Ronald Leandro also asked, how can our university can start, support, and apply your plastics project in our communities? Um, the, um, what is interesting about this company, they, they share their, uh, their expertise and know-how uh, online. So uh, their expertise and know-how is, 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 is uh, well, freely available. Uh, that's also part of their mission they say what we develop is not technological complicated, so there's no reason to uh, to keep it to ourselves. Um, and the key of their success is not per se the technology they are using. This is quite simple technology that can be acquired uh, or, or uh, that is available world, worldwide. The key is their um, their connections within uh, with the public organizations and also with the communities involved. So uh, I think um, the success for every uh, for ex every city or every region or uh, um, uh, place to apply this this example is is not per se in the technology that can be acquired, but the, the su success lies in creating a, a, a very good relationship with the different stakeholders involved, from uh, from uh, users, consumers to. Uh, waste management organizations, public organizations, and also making sure that there is a, a market being created. So there's also a need for uh, also talk to uh, companies or public organizations, what kind of products are should we make or should we develop? 
So the, well, the more social ecosystem, um, I would define as the key success factor of this, uh, of this initiative. Okay. Thank you. We have to talk about uh, many with many stakeholders. Actually, that's part of the the initiative yes. uh, with these projects. Yeah. Okay. The the last question that I have is coming from Laura Jimenez, and she is saying how to determine the boundaries in a systems such as enterprise. Um. Also, also different. That that, that depends on the on the perspective. Um. So um, it is useful to um, to not talk about to not define one boundary for the whole enterprise, but um, to make sure that on a on a more abstract general level you do understand the system as a whole. Um, but when analyzing the parts, um, yeah, we we will, would come into different boundaries. So for the supply chain, the boundary would be all the companies involved in this in the supply chain um, but then the key is to understand that um, this boundary is a ki kind of permeable so there's not a strict boundaries because all those companies involved are of course part of a bigger system um, but key is um, define what do we want to know in analyzing or what 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 aspect do we want to improve or what quality do, do we want to obtain and based on that question define uh, a system boundary um, and also understand that that system boundary is not the boundary for every other question. So other questions would need different boundaries. Because yeah, if we do not do that, uh, we can we can um, describe the enterprise uh, in its role and in all the stakeholders involved. That would be interesting to do and also useful on a general level. So uh, look at it from a um, look at the entire business model or the entire uh, ecosystem of the enterprise. Um, but when um, yeah, making that more concrete, we, it, is, it is necessary to, uh, to make certain choices and to make the boundary smaller and um, uh, make sure that not everything is, is, is part of that. So the, the systems perspective is not only about, is not per se about um, talking about everything that could be involved, but it's, it's about that there is a deep understanding that um, when this, depicting the boundaries, when setting the boundary, we understand that this boundary could, in, in another case, could be a different boundary. Which might sound yeah. a bit abstract if I hear, hear myself, but I, I, I hope it's, uh, my explanation is clear and makes sense to, the, uh, to Laura. I think it does. I think it does for the question, for the person who is asking actually, and the ones that are participating. Professor, thank you very much for all your information. The project and the systems perspective give us a new vision about all the systems and the things that we have to work in the future. If on behalf of the Oficina de Planificación y la Unidad de Control Especializada de la misma, we would like to give you a really good thank you, okay? Uh, have a nice evening. Thank you very much for your time. Okay. Let's hope that in the future we have another webinar uh, with you and give us more information. And actually, let's see if we can practice or uh, uh, have a this on hands on, on on one project and give a, give you some feedback and, and and try to review our projects to see if we are working well. <laughs> uh, but thank you very much uh, uh, well, for all the. Go ahead. Also, please. thank you, thank you for asking, and also based on the. Um... On, on this seminar, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm convinced you, you are doing a very good job when it comes to quality. Uh, I, I only hope that I could share a different perspective on um, uh, from from a systems view on on quality. Um, but I um, well, uh, I think this, for example, this week would be very beneficial, and um, I'm convinced there are a lot of experts on uh, on your university. So thanks for the question, and I'm um, well. I feel honored I could share some of my views. And uh, please don't hesitate to uh, connect to me or to contact me for any questions or uh, discussions. Yes, we will do. I know our faculty members will contact you by email if it's necessary and, and try to obtain more information about it. Thank you all. Uh, this is uh, la char el final de la charla. Eh, gracias a la Oficina de Planificación y la Unidad Especializada de Control Interno del Tecnológico por esta charla. De esta forma, damos por finalizada. Les damos un muy buenos días y gracias a todos. Thank you very much, doctor. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.